Hey guys, Tail Natty here. How are you guys doing? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to Big Nope, the channel where I talk about absolutely whatever the fuck I want. Today, I wanted to quickly talk about Sabrina Prater uh, once again because there are a couple of things that were going on when I uploaded my last video that I didn't know about until I uploaded the video and so I don't want to leave anyone confused but basically what happened when I uploaded my Sabrina Prater video, there were rumors, I guess, that Sabrina was missing and there were some news articles but not from legitimate websites uh, I wouldn't call them that or not websites that I would normally get my news from and not only that but the articles were all kind of copy pasta and so it made a lot of people think that Sabrina was missing that combined with the fact that she hadn't posted on her TikTok for more than three days when usually she posts daily so first of all I wanted to address that and let you know Sabrina's not missing if you haven't been checking up on this whole situation and maybe you just looked up Sabrina Prater on Google after watching my video and you saw like oh she's missing she is not missing uh, so that's the first thing that I wanted to address she's safe she's fine still on TikTok, still getting donations as far as I can tell and um, yeah there's a lot of things that I would like to say about this entire situation and thank you all for commenting on my video thank you for leaving your opinions and your thoughts some of you did leave you know the conspiracy theory kind of comments and right away I said like I don't agree with that I don't think that Sabrina's a murderer serial, serial killer anything like that and in my last video too I didn't um, I didn't say it with words I didn't verbally say it to you guys because I had already filmed the video before I kind of came to that conclusion but basically my conclusion was that um, Sabrina is most likely someone that either has struggled with addiction in the recent past or is still currently struggling with it and that's not to shame anyone like addiction happens and nobody chooses to be an addict so that's just my conclusion and I did have uh, somebody in the comments agree with me in particular as they had experience with addiction in their family and I've also had experience with addiction in my family and so I feel like when you go through those things and you feel them in real life you don't beat around the bush so much it has also been found out and I didn't mention this in my last video that Sabrina is actually a renovator and that is her profession oh before I quickly before I touch on that uh, let me just quickly say that Sabrina has officially come out she has come out as transgender so I am referring to her as she now those are the pronouns that she would like to go by uh, she identifies as a woman slash girl so transgender woman but in my past video Sabrina still had male in her bio so I referred to Sabrina as Sabrina slash Frank he slash him because you know I want to respect people based on their gender identity and Sabrina's bio said 34 year old male so I referred to Sabrina as a male and I just found it really interesting that some Somebody in the comments praised me for having referred to Sabrina as a male because apparently other people were already referring to Sabrina as she before she had come out. Her bio said that she has been dressing up since she was little and is working on coming out but to me, especially as somebody who is part of the LGBTQ plus community, yeah, I didn't personally find it specific enough. Like for all I knew, Sabrina could, you know, just be a cross-dresser, which like that's not offensive to say. Cross-dressing is still very much something that exists. <sighs> Getting a phone call. Hang on. Sorry, I got a phone call. It was really not important, but I thought it might be important, so I picked up anyway. Uh, so what I was saying is, yeah, Sabrina's gender identity. Now there's, there's a, a lot to be talked about in terms of that, and I would like to shout out, yes, we didn't do comments shout out, but I would like to shout out this person specifically for their comment and I replied to them saying that I'll address that in a video and so what this person was saying is that they feel like maybe Sabrina wouldn't have gotten as much hate and backlash if she was more conventionally attractive and you know what I do have to agree with that and that's not a matter of transphobia or discrimination it really becomes a matter of pretty privilege and so while I think that Sabrina is actually not very far off from conventionally attractive but I do think that maybe because she's only at the beginning of tra her transition or maybe she just hasn't had the opportunity uh, she hasn't developed like you know the strongest makeup skills and that's again nothing to be shamed for like we all have to start in a certain place but I really do think that like even if Sabrina had more conventionally attractive makeup like if she knew a couple more techniques and you know like made her eyes pop and all of that thing that even if that was the case like she would have definitely gained even more popularity and even more support because like it's just the reality but the internet has a boner for pretty people and yeah while I don't think that she's like you know a face only a mother could love type of thing I do I do see your point that yeah most likely she's not regarded as conventionally attractive by the general public but that can so easily be changed with just a few 
makeup things. My concern in the first video was really that uh, we didn't know what Sabrina's situation was. All we saw was this completely disheveled house that looked like it was almost falling apart like quite hazardous and then i also found that video where like sabrina's on tiktok and she's almost stepping on dog shit and it's like in the house there like by the kitchen area so it's just like it's not safe but it's also not sanitary and sabrina had mentioned in one of the captions of her tiktoks that she does have uh two kids she said that she got her kids back and uh yeah basically she does have two daughters from what i understand allegedly they are teenagers and they live with their mom so while sabrina is working on renovating that house. I guess the kids are staying with the mom. Sabrina has been putting in the work into the house. She's showed progress through a few TikToks, uh, not just of her dancing, but she's actually showed the progress of the house, like specifically dedicated a TikTok to that. So, you know, everything seems to be going well so far. Like, I think it's, it's, crazy that people accuse Sabrina of being a serial murderer, serial killer, like kidnapper, all of that just based on how that house looked and the potential association with Buffalo Bill, which I personally think if you see that at face value, I think it's okay for your brain to make that association. But yeah, I don't think it's like the nicest thing to leave that all the time in her comments, like Buffalo Bill, LOL, or like it puts the lotion on the skin. But to take it to the next level where you start blurring the lines between just like a meme kind of thought and thinking that this person is actually a serial killer or is trapping people in their basement or that that's blood on the floor like that's just too that's just too reachy and yeah some people ended up like getting really way too personal into this contacted the authorities which like i'm on board with in the sense that like i think it would be reasonable for someone to ask for a wellness check on sabrina but not reasonable in the sense that people fucking called the police and told them theories that had they have heard online and conspiracies about Sabrina trapping people and people some fucking investigators of TikTok and social media they started linking missing people in Flint, Michigan to Sabrina and I'm just like okay and then obviously some people went to the police with that so it just got blown up like way out of proportion and yeah if people were really concerned about the safety of sabrina all they would have to do is ask for the police to do a wellness check if they actually want to get involved into calling the police but as someone in my comments said they asked me can you please call the police and i replied to them I'm like I, there's been enough like traction on this online already that i'm pretty sure the police has gotten multiple calls so again that's another thing to think about like are you the first person that's going to be reporting this or do you think that there's already been a ton of reports because if you have this this feeling that there's been a ton of reports already put out then like stop like don't don't call the police and add more fuel to the fire and then the other thing for my part at least was i was concerned about the safety of the kids that might be possibly living with sabrina because i really had no information all i saw was the rundown house unsafe unsanitary and sabrina said that they were getting their kids back and i'm like are her kids gonna live in that house like that's not really that's not really safe from my point of view and like i gotta quickly say that i'm not sitting here on this like high chair high pedestal looking down at sabrina and judging her for her house my house looks like trash too okay and I've lived in like government subsidized housing where everything got cluttered super fast because of that poor mental poor immigrant mentality where like you have to keep everything you have to recycle everything it's like oh my precious even the house that I lived in back in Romania like my grandparents built them props to them for building an actual house out of nothing but some people have different ways of living and some people unfortunately also have bad habits when it comes to hoarding and things like that or just not keeping their house and I think that it's perfectly reasonable to expect as humans from anyone, whether they're poor or rich, I think it's perfectly normal to expect at least a good living environment that's not going to harm them, further deteriorate their health. Like, I don't know, just that dog shit on the floor just really scarred me because like it's one thing for it to like happen as an accident, but like she was dancing and almost stepping in and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, if you have time to be on TikTok, you have time to clean your house a little bit. And so yeah, uh, somebody in the comments said it's definitely classic that there's this expectation that poor people can't keep their house clean and I'm like first of all I didn't know if this comment was agreeing with my stance on it or not but I gotta say I agree with this comment it, it is classist to assume that poor people can't keep a house clean because in my opinion anyone can keep a house clean like certain things happens like yeah my house is fucking cluttered as hell but if my cat was to throw up on the floor or they don't shit on the floor but let's say out of some i don't know they would shit on the floor i would clean that up right away i wouldn't be making tiktoks and almost stepping in it so that's just my mentality anyone regardless of their status can keep a can keep their house clean and i've seen so many houses especially in in romania where i'm from where like a lot of the people that i knew were living under the poverty line and yet their houses and their 
places whatever wherever they lived in whether it was like a super small apartment or like a shack on the outside of the city like a small house shack kind of thing they kept it so clean and neat and it's really just up to the person and then the other thing that I just want to quickly say because I don't want to ramble too much about this I, I really want to make this a quick video and just let you guys know like Sabrina's okay kids are okay Sabrina's dogs are okay because I know some people were concerned about that um I think the number one thing that made Sabrina go viral is honestly not the fact that she's trans not the fact that she's not conventionally attractive and people might be like having like a Ugh, reaction I don't think it I don't think the Ugh, reaction was to Sabrina I think it was to the house I think that's honestly that's honestly it and in my opinion the the, the image that you put your, of yourself out there online is how people are going to view you as so I'm sorry people that thought that place was just like hell nah it's okay but I think Sabrina also in her heart knows that that place could be so much better because she's actively working on improving it and so I really hope that out of those donations that she's getting she's able to put a certain amount of money into renovating the house and then I would also if I were her I would also put a certain money a certain amount of money into like starting to become trying to become my own business because not everyone is so lucky to achieve like to achieve like this viral moment you know like I'm hoping that that will one day happen to me I'm not actively working towards it or anything I'm just kind of like doing my own thing right now I'm gonna talk to my personal channel about what's been going on in my life it's everything's all over the place so I'm not like focused on that right now but when that does happen when that viral moment does happen to someone who's trying to you know be on social media make a living off social media or whatever it, it, you really have to capitalize on that virality on that temporary virality and play your cards right in order to make it like a long-term thing so my best advice advice for her would be just put a bit of money into becoming your own business like I would I would I would push that Shania Twain bit so far like I really think that Sabrina can do a lot of great things on the internet and you know I suppose with time we'll we'll be able to see exactly what changes are happening in her life because it does look like she's trying to really create a better situation for herself um yeah I guess that's all that I really really have to say for now and yeah I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I love you guys wherever you are in the world. Please take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye!